Hello friends, this video on electric circuits part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 6 before going ahead with part 7. We had to study uh, about a cell, I mean as far as their structure and properties concerned. So we studied about three important properties of a cell. The first one is the EMF of a cell. Second one is the internal resistance of a cell and the third one is the terminal potential difference of a cell and I hope that you are able to understand each of them properly. So the next topic we will see how do we group cells in a circuit. I mean what are the different possible ways of arranging cells in a circuit. Like how we studied in case of resistors and capacitors. We can uh, put resistors in series we can put them in parallel. Similarly, we can put the capacitors in series as well as in parallel. So, in the same way, we will see what are the possible ways of arranging cells in a circuit. So, for cells also, we have two combinations. The first one is the series combination and the second one is the parallel combination. So, the, they are same as we had discussed in case of resistors and capacitors. So, now we will discuss each of these combination for cells in detail. So first we will start with cells in series. So what do I mean when I say that cells arranged in series? So what do we mean by cells connected or grouped in series? Well here also the combination would be similar to what it was in case of resistors and capacitors. But at, let us have a look. It will look somewhat like this. If I have multiple cells and if they are arranged in such a way that the positive terminal of one is connected to the negative terminal of the other and then again the negative terminal is connected to the positive terminal and so on, then it is known as cell, that they are connected in series. Let us draw it using the symbol or circuit symbol. If the cells are connected like this, they are said to be in series. If you see here, negative of the first cell is connected to the positive of the second cell. Negative of the second cell is connected to the positive of the third cell. Negative of the third cell is connected to the positive of the fourth cell and so on. So then we say that the cells are connected in a series combination. So what, I mean, let us suppose if in a circuit we have some 10 cells connected in a series. So what would be the effective EMF of that circuit? Like for example here in this circuit also, let us say I say that each of these 5 cells are of some EMF E1, E2, E3, E4 and E5. So what would be the equivalent or the effective EMF of the circuit due to these 5 cells connected in series. So let us try to calculate that. So in order to calculate that we assume just 2 cells for now. Okay. So let us suppose this cell has an EMF of E1. The second one has an EMF of E2. Let us say this is point A, this point is point B and this point is point C. We say that the potential at these three points A, B and C are VA, VB and VC, right? So the potential at each of these points are different, right? So now for the first cell for the first cell with EMF E1. So let us write the expression or the equation for potential difference between these two points. If I consider the cell E1, we can calculate the potential difference between the two electrodes. Right now, if you look at this, you can see that it is an open circuit, right? Assume that it is not an open circuit. Assume that it is a closed circuit. Right? You assume it like this. That there is some resistor and it is a closed circuit. You assume it. Okay? So, had there been a resistor or an external circuit or that there will be some flow of current. 
as soon as some current is flowing there some resistance will be offered by this cell itself so let us call that internal resistance as r1 for the first cell and r2 for the second cell okay so for the first cell the expression for potential difference that is va minus vb the potential difference between these two points will be equal to the potential difference between the two electrodes right so the potential difference will be equal to the emf emf e1 is the potential difference between these two electrodes when it is an open circuit that is when there is no current flowing through the cell so this will be e1 minus the voltage drop across the internal resistance that is i r1 similarly for e2 the potential difference between b and c that means it will be vb minus vc will be equal to e2 minus i r2 so this is my first equation and this is my second equation now if you add the two equations what do you get it is va minus vb plus vb minus vc so this will be your left hand side this is equal to e1 minus i r1 plus e2 minus i r2 so this becomes va minus vc is equal to e1 plus e2 minus i r1 plus r2 so this is what we get by adding these two equations now let us assume that e equivalent let us assume that instead of these two cells you have just one cell let us assume that it, there is there are not two cells instead of that there is only one cell between the point a and c so we are basically replacing these two cells with one cell whose emf is e equivalent and internal resistances are equivalent then what will happen in that case so we are assuming e equivalent instead of e1 and e2 so we can write the expression for this cell as well so for this va minus vc will be equal to e equivalent minus i are equivalent right this is the fourth expression now if you compare equation 4 with equation 3 what do you see the left hand side is equal va minus vc here also va minus vc so that means the right hand side should also be equal now if you compare the right hand side you can see that e equivalent is nothing but e1 plus e2 and r equivalent is nothing but r1 plus r2 therefore what do we conclude we conclude that for cells arranged in series equivalent emf is equal to sum of the individual emfs and equivalent internal resistance is equal to sum of the individual internal resistances right so i hope i made it clear okay so now let us look at a scenario where n cells are connected in series let us suppose because in the previous slide i derived the expression for two cells okay so now let us say that there are n cells which are connected in series let us suppose it is connected in an external circuit where there is a resistance capital r now each of this cell has internal resistance r and emf as e so in this case what will happen what will be the total resistance of the circuit total resistance of the circuit will be external resistance plus the equivalent internal resistance now what will be the equivalent internal resistance it will be sum of all the resistances since there are n cells that means this will be n into r so this is the total resistance of the circuit what is the effective emf 
of the cells in the circuit. Effective EMF will be the sum of the EMF of all the cells connected in series. So that will be N times the EMF of each cell that is NE. Therefore, this is a closed circuit, right? So current will flow through this external resistance R. Let us say this current is I. Therefore, the current flowing across the external resistance R, that is I, will be equal to the effective EMF, effective EMF divided by the total resistance. So, effective EMF is NE divided by the total resistance R plus NR because current is what? Current is nothing but the voltage divided by resistance according to Ohm's law, right? So, this will be your current. Now, this current, if you look at it, the external resistance as well as the internal resistance plays an important role in the current which flows through the circuit. So, there are two scenarios which can arise. First is current through the resistance when capital R is very very greater than NR. That means when the external resistance is very high as compared to the internal resistance. In that case, what will happen to current? In that case, I can ignore NR as compared to R. So, I can write it as R. So, that it becomes N times E by R. What is E by R? E by R is nothing but the current due to a single cell current across R, current across the external resistance due to a single cell. So, the current becomes N times the current due to a single cell across the external resistance. The second scenario when R is very, when the external resistance is very small, in that case current will become NE divided by NR. So, this will be equal to E divided by R. In that case, the current through the circuit will be equal to the current due to a single cell. Right? So, these are the two observations which we can derive from this expression. Right? So, this shows that how, how does it affect, how does the arrangement of cells in series affect the current that flows in a circuit. Right? So, when we arrange cells in series, what happens to the current? The current will depend on how much current will flow through the circuit. That basically depends on the value of the external resistance and the internal resistance. If the external resistance is very high, in that case, the current will be n times the current due to a single cell. But if the external resistance is very small, in that case, the current through the circuit will be same as the current through due to a single cell. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.